Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Cave Spring United Methodist Church. We are delighted that you are joining us today as we worship God together with our hearts and voices, hands and feet. I'm Pastor Lauren. And I'm Pastor Tim. And you might notice there's no one sitting in the pews this morning. That's because today is our day of service. We've invited the entire church family to come to church, split up the teams, and do all kinds of wonderful work, such as... Well, we have all of our projects related to education and care of our students and teachers. We have a couple of teams that are going to Hidden Valley High School and Cave Spring High School to spread mulch, so those schools will be ready to welcome new students for the school year in a couple of weeks. We have a team that is downstairs here at Cave Spring Church in our weekday school to paint some classrooms so they'll be ready for two and three and four-year-olds to come to school and learn. We have a team that is in our fellowship hall that is putting together goodie bags for school teachers and staff to let them know how much we appreciate the work that they do and that we are behind them supporting them as they start a new school year. We have a team that is doing hospitality work, setting up a lunch that we're going to share a little bit later this morning. And we have our children doing a couple of projects, including working on those goodie, ba goodie bags I mentioned earlier and working on a fundraiser for our backpack ministry. So all kinds of good things being done today. We're really excited to be reaching out to our community. And you would think with all of that, we'd be tired and have nothing more to do. But that's not true. We have more ways to be the body of Christ coming up. Uh, this Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m., all the men of the church are invited to come here to the church. And we're going to have a cookout and enjoy some time and fellowship together. And if you'd like to be part of that, just let me know. Drop me an email or call the church or call my uh, cell number and we'll get you on that list. Then on Thursday night, we're going to have a parents' night out. We're going to have some youth and some um, children's workers come, and we're going to watch your kids for a couple of hours so you get a couple hours of break, bring them on over, take a break, but then come back and get the kids. Uh, and then after that, the youth are going to stay. We're going to do a lock-in that night. And then this upcoming Sunday, uh, we're going to pray for our schools. So we're inviting you to come back to the church on that Sunday at 4.30. And we're going to break into teams and we're going to go physically to the different schools around our area and we're going to pray for the school in their upcoming year. But being all that and being the body of Christ, it's now time to worship God. So let us sing together our first song, which is Here I Am, Lord. <laughs> I 
I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am. Is it on I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. We're thankful that we get to come to the church and go around our community and be the hands and feet of Christ today. But God, we also pray as we now open your word and hear it proclaimed that you would open our eyes, hearts, and ears to hear what you would have to say to us. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 10. Listen again for the word of God. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Fred Rogers, the Presbyterian minister from Pittsburgh, the creator and star of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, is famed for saying this. He said, love isn't a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun like struggle. Mr. Rogers is right that love is not a state of perfect caring. And that's an important challenge for us to hear. Because often we think of love as, as a pool, something that you fall into or out of, something that you can bask in, and something you can leave. We think of love as a static object. Sometimes we treat it as currency, something that can be given and taken away, that can be exchanged, that can be accrued or lost. But that's not how we experience love. And it's not what we see in the scriptures either. Now, I hate to quibble with Mr. Rogers, he is deeply wise and right about nearly everything. But I would argue that while he says it's an active noun and that's pretty close, I would argue that love isn't just an active noun. Love is a verb. An active noun is still a noun. It's a thing, a person, a place, a state, an object. And that is not what we see most of the time in the scriptures. Throughout the scriptural witness, love is almost always used as a verb, not something that is exchanged, given, taken away, a state that we fall into. It is instead something that is embodied, something that is enacted. Love is something we do, something we experience, something we're called to live. We see this throughout the scriptures, not just as something we are commanded to do, but first and foremost as something that God enacts toward the world. God is love, says the scriptures. But God isn't just love as a static 
condition. God is love because God is constantly acting with love toward creation. From before the beginning, God created out of love. God made beauty and diversity of creation that we witness around us every day, this wonderful, magnificent world that we are just beginning to understand. This universe that we are sending out telescopes to begin to glimpse, God made all of that out of love. It's an action that God took. And God didn't just create and then step back and watch this all unfold with warm, fuzzy feelings. God continued to actively love, to nurture humans and animals and plants, to develop systems that allow us to continue to thrive and grow, to watch over God's people, to guide us, to speak to us by the Spirit and by messengers and by prayer. God continues to preserve and sustain creation, to guide and watch over creation, and all of those things are ways that God loves. We see that most clearly in Jesus Christ, where God decided that God didn't want to love from a distance. God didn't want to just use words that might be misunderstood. God wanted to dwell with us, to embody love in ways that we could understand. So God came in Christ to heal, to teach, to draw in outcasts, folks who were on the margins, to embrace God's people. God, in Christ, endured crucifixion and triumphed in resurrection so that we might understand the fullness, the lengths to which God will love. We see throughout the scriptures that God loves, not just as a warm, fuzzy feeling, a state of perfect caring, but as an action. God practices love, the verb. And then God calls us to respond in kind. As those who have experienced this abundant love, God calls us to love God, Fully, and to love one another. Again, as an action. Oftentimes, I think we are tempted to feel warm, fuzzy feelings and wish good things for our neighbors rather than taking actions to improve our neighbors' conditions, rather than embodying our love for them. But we see throughout the scriptures that God loves in action, and God calls us to do likewise. Today you will see we have an empty sanctuary, because today we are actively focusing on loving as a verb. We are going out to experience God's love in our community, to see where the Holy Spirit is moving among us, and we are going out to embody love for our neighbors. We are taking actions that show the people around us what love looks like. The love of God and the love of this faith community. There are two things I would wish for you today. The first is that you would hear and know that you are loved that you would understand that the creator of the universe is acting with love toward you. I hope you will look around you and see the signs of God's love. I also pray that whether you are part of our service day officially here or not, that you will find a way today to enact love, to embody this verb, towards someone around you, whether it is by offering a smile to a 
downcast stranger, whether it is offering a kind word to someone that you interact with, whether it's noticing a beautiful dress someone is wearing and telling them, hey, that dress is awesome. Whether it's picking up a phone to someone you know is lonely and struggling or writing out a card to someone who's going through a hard time, giving a hug to someone in your family. I pray that some, in some way today, you will live out love as a verb. And in doing so, you will know that that same love is enacted toward you through the God who made you, who sustains you, who saves you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, as you're watching online, uh, we would like you to click on the Connect card, whether that's in the link here or go to our webpage and click on the worship landing page. Uh, connect with us, let us know that you uh, uh, watch today and also any prayer requests that you might have for this upcoming week because your staff will be in prayer for you. But let's join our hearts together now and let's go to God in prayer. God of love, give us a deep love for you so that you can see the world as we can see the world as you see it. Feel the compassion as you feel and be a people whose lives meditate your love to others. So open our eyes that we might see what the Good Samaritan saw. Grant us the insight to see the need in others, the wisdom to know what to do and the will to do it. And so we pray for all those who in many and various ways have been stripped, beaten, and left for dead. We pray for children who must grow up in the most awful of circumstances, especially for those starved and starved of love and food or shelter or security. May they receive the future you have planned for them. We pray for those we might cross the road to avoid, who we've been excluded socially because of their race, their financial status, or their history. May the dignity that is theirs be restored to them. May we pray for those who need, um, whose need we would rather not face up to because it requires action of us. Those who suffer atrocities uh, because of war, unjust trade values, or oppressive governments. May the world receive a true picture of their suffering and the factors that cause it, that justice may be done. Open our eyes that we might not cross the road from human need. Give us a deep love for you, that we might see your love at work in this world, and that we might go and do likewise. And now we lift our voices together and we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. just sit, I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence, and I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. Oh 
goes down. For you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I go where you will lead me, Lord. For you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I go where you You are upheld, embraced, and saved by the God whose love is a verb. Go to share that love with others, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen.